a diver's alley pierce scuba. Excuse me one moment. Hmm. Sometimes a little bit of water is good when your throat's dry from talking. But when you're breathing underwater and you get water coming in through your regular into your mouth, it's not good. For two reasons. First of all, it indicates there's something wrong with the regulator. There's something wrong with the regulator, which is not good for your head. It may not be good for your health. Second reason is it tickles your throat. Me anyway, certainly for salt water, because it doesn't come in in gulps. It comes in a little spray, and you feel it, it tickles your throat, and you start to cough. And I don't know if you've coughed and sneezed underwater. It's pretty interesting. Actually, it's hard to sneeze underwater because nothing tickles your nose if it's inside the mask. But I've done that. Anyway, your regulator is breathing wet. <coughs> Pardon me. Not an uncommon problem. What makes a regulator breathe wet? Well, it's broken. No. There are only two reasons why a reg will breathe wet. There's only two reasons. Now, this is assuming that it's not a major breakdown. That is, that the housing is not broken, or the hose isn't broken and water's coming in. That can't happen if the hose breaks, air comes out. But assuming that the housing wasn't cracked and letting water in, <coughs> I'm sorry, there's only two ways that water can come into our regulator. The one way is through the diaphragm. You see, there's this large rubber piece of rubber or silicone, diaphragm it's called. This is the actual part of the regulator, soft rubber, that when you breathe it goes in, in and out like this, and on the inside the metal part pushes against the lever that opens the valve that gives you air. Critical piece of equipment, right? But it is thin rubber, and sometimes they get tears, a little hole in them, or a little tear in them sometimes. It can happen. Not common with the new silicone ones, but it can happen. Now, the other part of the regulator, the second stage that can leak water, is this little thing here, another little rubber ring. This is the exhaust valve, commonly called a mushroom valve. Can you see why it's called a mushroom valve? It looks like a mushroom. Okay? It has to be one of those two things. Okay, now, first of all, how do you know which it is? Well, you obviously you could look at them. But that's hard to figure out. Let me give you a couple of tips here that might be interesting. So you're swimming along underwater, breathing on your famous old regular you've had for 39 years. <laughs> Maybe one reason why it's breathing wet. But anyway, swimming along, and you're getting water coming in. Okay? It's got to be one of those two things. You know that because you're technically inclined, plus you've watched my tech tip. <laughs> so you know it's one of those two things. How do you know which it is? Well, let me explain. It's very simple. If you're swimming along like this, upright, face up like this, and you're getting water in, it's the diaphragm. If you go and put your face down, so your feet are up in the air and you're completely upside down like this, or you're breathing like this, I guess you could take this out of your mouth and flip it over, maybe, and breathe in like this, and you get water in, it's the mushroom valve, the exhaust valve. How do I know that? What makes that work? Well, it's really very simple. When you're breathing like this, the exhaust valve, which is down in here, is lower, has more pressure on it. It'll seal. Won't leak. If it still leaks, it must be coming into the diaphragm. If this is upside down and you're getting water, well, now the diaphragm has pressure on it, but the exhaust valve up here has very little pressure on it. If it's getting water now, it's probably the exhaust valve. Not 100%. But it gives you an idea. So what do you do about it? Well, obviously you take it to your local dive store. Oh, what the heck are you talking about? This is the first day of a two-week dive trip on a liverboard. There are no parts and no technician. Not a very good liverboard. But anyway, you can take a look at this yourself and maybe figure it out. Here's what you do. First of all, most regulators, it's fairly easy to get the front cover off. Some of them have secret little notches and buttons that you have to press and so on. Not a bad idea for you to check out your own regulator and see how you get the first stage up. This regulator has a tiny hole with a little pin that goes into that hole to hold it in place. Pull the pin out and the cover spins off. Other regulators have a little hidden notch. Look for it. Some regulators peel off. The front cover peels off. There's various ways that that front cover comes off. You've got to get that front cover off. So you take the front cover off. Don't lose anything. A lot of parts to this. There's a little friction ring here. There's another ring here, which is simply a diaphragm retainer. And then you come to the diaphragm. In this case, this is a silicone diaphragm, crystal clear. So take the diaphragm out. Now hold it up to the sunlight. Pull it out like this. Stretch it out like this. So you're stretching it. And as you do that, look around. If there's a hole in it, oh, oh, oh darn it. There's a hole right in the diaphragm. That's your problem. What do you do now? Scotch tape doesn't cut it. However, there are some little quick fixes 
silicon sealant will actually help. May not be permanent, but it can help. So see if the dive store, if the dive bolt doesn't have some silicone sealant on there. Try it. Put a tiny drop of silicone sealant on each side. Spread it and squeeze it together so some of the silicone sealant goes through the hole and a bit on each side. Let it dry overnight. If you're lucky, it might work. You want to hear something really, really weird that I've seen, heard people do? A piece of saran wrap. Man. Put this all back together. Put the diaphragm in. And then cut a piece of saran wrap. It doesn't have to be too good either. Get a piece of saran that fits over top of that. So now you're shielding this in the water, but the water will still reach it. And then carefully put it back together. Put the retainer, which will now fit on top of the saran wrap, right? And then a little friction ring. The friction ring is there so when you turn the cover on, it doesn't dislodge everything. Put it back together, cross your fingers, and it might just work. So there's a couple of tips on the diaphragm. Well, suppose it isn't a hole in the diaphragm. You want to check the exhaust. Well, the same thing. Most regulators, there's some way to get the exhaust exposed. Sometimes it's from the inside. Sometimes it's from the outside. You'll have to sort of play with it and look at it. Some have a little clip, a little lock on it. This particular regulator has a pin. You put something in there. You see the pin? Pull the pin out. That little plastic, plastic piece comes off, and there's the rubber exhaust valve. And the same thing. Now, don't take it out if you're going to avoid it. I'm going to pull this one out because you do the same thing. Pull it out if you need to, and then take the same thing. Look at it. The edges. There might be a cut or a tear in the edge. And look around and see if there's a tiny hole in this. With these, pretty hard to repair these. If it's actually a problem, then what you'll need to do is get a new one. It's that simple. Somehow you have to find a new one. So look around, ask around on the dive boat, see what they have. It does not have to be a XYZ brand number 203. It does not have to be the exact mushroom valve. They're all the same. They're all identical except for diameter. So all you need to do is find an exhaust valve with the same diameter. This is a little bit too small. Try another one. When you get one that's pretty close to the same diameter, reinstall it by pushing it through and pulling the other side, snap it in, and you've just repaired your second stage. No more water. Now if you want to get water in your mouth, you're going to have to reach for a cup. And this is water, right, Kevin? Yeah. Anyway, a couple ideas on why your regulator can leak water, how you know where it's coming from, and how to fix it. I hope there's something in there for you. Take care. Talk to you soon. Alec Pierce, Tech Tips.